We are back once again here on the channel for another Monday Night Raw review. And, um, you know, Monday Night Raw, man, it's going back to its old, same old trash again. I don't understand it. Sasha Banks was probably the only good thing about this entire show. Her little, little promo that she cut on Ronda Rousey, that was probably the only good thing about the show. But majority of the show was trash. It was stupid. I mean, I don't understand. How could they put on such a good show last week? How could they put on such a good show last week and then resort back to the trash that they've been giving us? I mean, seriously. The show started off with Brock Lesnar. Sure, that's a bit of a change to see Brock Lesnar. But, it, but, it's, still, but it's still stupid. To see Brock Lesnar as the Universal Champion. Paul Heyman. You know, Paul Heyman comes out saying that Finn, like, no one believe that, 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 that Finn Balor doesn't stand a chance. Talk about how everyone believes in Finn Balor. And Paul Heyman's like, oh, Finn Balor doesn't stand a chance against Brock Lesnar. He's got no chance against Brock Lesnar. And all this, and all this other, and all this other stupid crap that he that 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 heels normally say when you got that underdog. I mean, seriously, the story writes itself. This entire storyline writes itself. No one believes in Finn Balor, so obviously you would have the guy that no one believes in overcomes, and 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 people believe. Now I know. This is such an easy story to do. This is such an easy thing to do. We need to have a different champion heading into the WrestleMania season. I do not, I do not want to see Brock Lesnar head into WrestleMania again as Universal Champion. We all don't want that. And apparently the reports have been saying that Vince wants Brock versus Braun at WrestleMania. So this is obviously, if that's the case, then obviously Braun Strowman's going to win the Royal Rumble. But, th but again, this storyline writes itself. I don't understand it. Th th I don't understand it. This story writes itself. I know it may be unbelievable to some people. In some people's eyes, it's not believable for Finn Balor to beat Brock Lesnar. Yes, I understand that. But... If you, but if the storyline is basically saying, no one believes in, no one believes in Finn, no one believes in Finn, he doesn't stand a chance. David versus Goliath, that type of story, like they were mentioning on Raw. The 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 David overcomes the Goliath. That's how it needs to be. Finn Balor needs to overcome Brock. And that's how the story needs to be written. Not the, not the Goliath beating the David. But, but I don't see, I don't see WWE putting the belt on Finn. I think Finn should win at the Royal Rumble. We all know Finn deserves it. But it just doesn't seem like that's going to be the direction they're going to go. But like I said, the story writes itself and it seems like WWE won't go that direction. Then Vince... But we had Vince and Braun also get involved, and Finn Balor, he came out as well. They all came out, and they were all going back and forth. And then Vince decided to book a match between Finn Balor and Braun Strowman. A, uh, a David versus Goliath-like match. So Vince McMahon wanted to give the people an example of, of that. But in the end of it all, Finn Balor wins the match by disqualification. Brock Lesnar actually gets involved in this match. And delivers an F5 to Finn Balor. Now, I don't know if people believe in this. This is some. This is something that I was always told as a growing up when it came to watching wrestling. I don't know if people believe in this type of thing, but when my brother, when I used to watch this with my brother when I was younger, gr growing up, getting into wrestling, he'd always tell me. Whatever happens on the final episodes of Raw and SmackDown, you would know who's going to win at the pay-per-views. That's what he would always tell me. So, if I'm going to go by what my brother thinks, because Brock Lesnar attacked Finn, 
Finn Balor is going to win. That's what he would tell me. That's how, that's how it seems logic to him. But I don't know if people believe in that. I don't know how many people believe in that type of thing. But hey, that's just something that my brother always told me. Bobby Lashley came out to celebrate his Intercontinental Championship victory. His first title he has held in 12 years, apparently. Which is what they say. And and then Apollo Crews. I knew someone was going to interfere. I didn't interrupt this. I just couldn't think of who. Who would. Maybe Elias. But that didn't happen. Um, Apollo Crews. He was the one that interfered interfered and got involved in this and I had flashbacks of 2003 Jesus Christ I had 2003 flashbacks Bobby Lashley and Apollo Crews have a pose off seriously I just got reminded of that awful pose off that Triple H and Scott Steiner had all the way back in 2003 in the Ruthless Aggression Era Seriously, I seriously got reminded of that. When I saw those two doing poses at each other, that's exactly what Triple H and Scott Steiner did back in 2003. Seriously. Ridiculous. This is garbage. This is stupid. I don't understand how this could make it on Monday Night Raw. I guess if it made it on Raw in 2003, I guess it can make it on Raw here in 2019. But still, it's still stupid. Even even in 2003, it was stupid. But in the end, the fans would always boo Lashley every time he'd pose. And the fans would cheer Apollo every time he'd pose. And of course, I predicted this. I think we all would have known. I, I think we all knew this was coming. Bobby Lashley attacks Apollo Crews. Go figure. I think we all saw that coming. And... And then, and then they have a match, and Bobby Lashley wins due to outside interference. Which, by the way, victory due to outside interference is always a sin. Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre, they had a pretty good match. Seth Rollins got the victory via roller. Now this match was a waste of time. This is what I call a waste of time match. We had the we had the Lucha House Party take on Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers. Yeah, yes. We're seeing the Singh Brothers now compete on Monday Night Raw. The Singh Brothers are basically Zelina Vega. Zelina, Zelina Vega was a manager. Now she's wrestling and manager. Singh Brothers are managers for Jinder Mahal. And they're wrestling. So, go figure. So, they're kind of following the footsteps of Zelina Vega. And uh, the Lucha House Party get the victory here. With Grand Metallic doing a springboard splash. Yes, a springboard splash. That's what I saw. That's what I believe it was. And he pins Sunil Singh with it. Unbelievable. Now, there's one thing I need to complain about. Is that WWE showed EC3's promo package on Raw. And I thought it was them actually saying that they actually signed him to Raw. So, because they didn't show the others. But, they show EC3's promo package. And I was thinking, okay, maybe they're going to have him debut. They're going to have him make his debut in the ring. Nope. He doesn't even wrestle. As soon as they show his promo, as soon as they show his promo package, they cut to him backstage looking in a rearview mirror with Dana Brooke mesmerized by his looks. That's the best you've got for EC3 after showing this guy's promo package? Are you kidding me? I don't understand this. I don't understand why you would bring these people up and you're not going to do anything with them. Michael Cole said that these wrestlers are on trial. What trial? What trial 
are they on? What trial is EC3 on? Looking in a rear view mirror, posing? So that's his trial. He's just going to look in the mirror and be like, Yeah, look at me. I'm sexy. Look at my muscles. That's EC3's trial. He's going to look in the mirror and he's just going to believe he's sexy. So that's his trial. Well, if that's his trial, I think he should go back to NXT and set, tell Triple H, No thanks. I'm not accepting this trial. I want to go back to NXT. I don't want to be on Raw or SmackDown because all they've done is put me in front of a mirror and they believe this is my trial. What a waste of time, man. This is really, really dumb. Another, another waste of my time match was Baron Corbin versus Elias. When is Baron Corbin going to get rid of the silly suit and tie? I mean, he's not GM anymore, so why is he still wearing that? He should be going back to his original ring gear. But, either way, Baron Corbin, Elias again in another match. And what do you know? Baron Corbin wins again. I believe we saw this last week. think so. No, we didn't see it last week. We saw it the week before. Elias was helping Braun find a Baron Corbin last week. It's the week before we saw this. We had Moment of Bliss, where, where Alexa Bliss was hyping up the all-women's Royal Rumble. And, and, and she was going to have Nia Jax as her guest. So all the women on Monday Night Raw came out. They are all going to start having a brawl. Alexa Bliss was trying to calm them all down, telling them not to argue on her show. And who's the one that starts the fight? Alexa's guest. Alexa's guest, Nia, Nia Trash, starts the fight by pushing Ember Moon. So if Alexa Bliss has anyone to blame for her show being ruined with, uh, with, 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 all, the, with all the women attacking each other, it's Nia Jax. She should be getting angry at her because she caused the fight. But Alexa Bliss remained calm after the brawl ended because they all went backstage. Then Alexa Bliss announced herself to be a part of the All Women's Royal Rumble. I'm excited. I'm glad to see Alexa Bliss finally cleared to wrestle. And, and then who interrupts? Lacey Evans interrupts at the very end. And WWE, they must have been thinking with my logic here. What did they do? Lacey Evans came out, trashed Alexa. She was trashing Alexa, calling her a runt, calling her a little girl, calling, saying that she's classless, that she's, that she's not what a woman is on Monday Night Raw. How simple was that? How, how simple was that, WWE? Now you've planted seeds for Alexa Bliss to turn face. Something that I have been begging you to do for a long, long time now. Now that wasn't so difficult, now was it? And of course, Lacey Evans also announced herself in the Women's Royal Rumble as well. Alexa Bliss wasn't too happy with what Alexa, with, uh, with what, uh, what Lacey Evans said to her. She had that, she had a bit of a, an angry looking face at Lacey Evans for calling her classless, calling her a runt, a little girl. Now, that wasn't so difficult. Now, was it WWE? That wasn't so hard. Now, all you got to do is build Alexa Bliss up into a babyface role. Also, I want to mention something real quick. People want to know why Alexa Bliss is always featured. Listen to the people. The people cheer her. The people cheer her. Why do you think she always gets screen time? Because people like her. They want to see her. Simple enough, isn't it? And I hate how people trash on Alexa Bliss for having a talk show. Yet The Miz has Miz TV. Christian had The Peep Show. Edge had Cutting Edge. Roddy P Roddy... Yeah, excuse me, my throat got caught. Roddy Piper had Piper's Pit. Chris Jericho had the highlight reel. And, and some barber beefcake guy back in the 1980s 
had his own talk show when that scene where Shawn Michaels super kicked some dude named Ma Marty Jannetty when they were in some kind of tag team called the Rockets. Yet all those people that I just listed to you had their own talk show, but you complain about Alexa Bliss having her own talk show. I guarantee you this was probably the last time we're going to be seeing Moment of Bliss. Because the report said WWE only gave Alexa Bliss this show while she was injured. She was injured, so they needed her to do something. So like, oh, maybe we'll give her a talk show just to buy some time, just to kill some time for her to do something. They didn't want her off TV. They didn't want her off TV. They knew they wanted her they wanted her on TV every week. So 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 we're probably not gonna see Moment of Bliss anymore. Now that she's cleared to wrestle, we're probably not gonna see the show anymore. Maybe, may, 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 maybe it still comes around, but I don't know. The reports I the reports that I read said that they gave her this talk show while she was injured. Now that she's medically cleared to compete in the women's Royal Rumble. She doesn't need it anymore. But anyway, moving on. Heavy Machinery made their debut. Now, this is what WWE should have done with EC3. This is what they should have done with EC3 when they were showing his promo package. They had Tucker Knight and Otis Dosovic compete in a tag team match against The Ascension. And they squashed the Ascension easy. Connor didn't even get to the ring. Connor didn't even get, get a chance to compete. Otis and Taka were just destroying Victor like, like, he was yes, like he was yesterday's news. Or like he was just an enhancement talent. So they destroy Victor very easily of the Ascension. And they win. Good, good. Well... Whatever. The Revival. Now, I know this happened early on, but the Revival were backstage and they were talking to Vince about how they've been getting robbed and Kurt Hawkins walks in and and, and, and the Revival want a referee that will actually call it down the middle. That's a fair referee. So Vince Man appoints Kurt Hawkins to be the referee of the match and the Revival... They basically claim, they bas they basically claim, the Revival basically think that they've got Kurt Hawkins in their pocket, because they're like, yeah, they'll, he will help us win the tag team titles. So the match happens. Kurt Hawkins is in the ring. Three times, the Revival did a dirty tactic to win. I believe one, one was Scott Dawson held Bobby Roode's foot underneath the rope. Kurt Hawkins catches Scott Dawson doing it. The next one is Scott Dawson elbows Bobby Roode in the face. Dash Wilder puts his legs on the ropes, on the second ropes. Kurt Hawkins catches Dash Wilder cheating again. And then the third time, they do a roll-up on Bobby Roode and they pull his tights. And Kurt Hawkins catches him again. So three times the Revival tried to do something sneaky and dirty. And Kurt Hawkins caught them three times. And, and this was upsetting the Revival. And Bobby Roode and Chad Gable, they end up winning the match to retain the Raw Tag Team titles. I think we all saw this coming. I think we all saw this coming... I think we all knew that the Revival weren't going to win. And this basically spells the end for the Revival. That's basically it. This basically spells the end of the Revival. This clearly shows you Vince doesn't care about the Revival. Even, even when they're going to get released. It's clear that he doesn't care. It's clear. It's clear he doesn't care. Obviously, Vincent Man knows about their termination, knows about their release, and he's like, "Well, if you're gonna be like that, then, then yeah, we'll, then I'll treat you like trash." So Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder, 
they get so frustrated, Kurt Hawkins shows them the replay, and, and Jesus freaking Christ, man, I bloody hate Corey Graves. He was going on about how, how Kurt Hawkins should have kept counting. I know Corey Graves is a heel commentator, but I hate how he, 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 he promotes that Kurt Hawkins was doing the wrong thing. Like I said, I know Corey Graves is a heel commentator, but it's so annoying. It's so annoying. Listen to him argue, bitch, and moan, and whine, and complain when when the heels don't get their victories. And, and Kurt Hawkins, Michael Cole, and Renee Young were correct. Kurt Hawkins was doing his job as a referee. He was catching them getting involved, cheating, grabbing legs, putting the, pulling the tights, and putting their legs on the road. He was doing his job. So you want an so you want so Corey Graves basically wants a referee to ignore the pulling of the tights, the legs that are that, that are hung on the ropes, and, and promoting wrestlers holding people's feet and the referees just ignoring it. So that's ba so so basically So that's basically what Corey Graves is doing here. I understand he's a heel commentator, but there's also times he may come off as a face commentator depending on who's in the ring. But but still I found it annoying and it was dumb. So the Revival end up attacking Kurt Hawkins. And who comes out to save Kurt Hawkins? Zack Ryder. Finally! Zack Ryder's on Monday Night Raw. And you know what makes me happy about this? Is that Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder used to be a tag team. And now finally, finally they're doing the one thing that, I, that WWE should have done. When they moved the Zack Ryder to Monday Night Raw, put him with Kurt Hawkins. Have them reunite as a tag team. At least that way you're using Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. They used to be tag team champions together, for Christ's sake. Getting these two back together as a tag team is the best thing for Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. And the main event was the Boss and Hug Connection, Sasha and Bailey versus Ronda Rousey and Natalia. Now, this was obviously going to be the main event. They were trying they were keep they were kept on saying later tonight, later tonight, later tonight. They should have just said main event. They should have just called it the main event of the show. I didn't like how the commentators were like promoting it as like, oh it could happen in the middle of the show or halfway to the end of the show. They should have just said it was the main event. But they never did. But I kind of figured it was the main event anyway. So, Sasha Banks comes out and cuts another truth bomb. Saying that Ronda Rousey has been, get, has been handed everything. Yes, handed everything. She, she was given everything, handed everything. Sasha, women like Sasha and Bailey, you know, they work their ass off 300 days a year. Busting their asses off. You know, busting their asses off. Competing every single week. Competing at house shows. Tearing it down. Showing the world why the women's division is all about wrestling. But Ronda Rousey, she just gets handed a title shot. She was given the title without even fighting for it. Without even working for it. And Sasha was telling the truth. And I hate how the Ronda Rousey fans are basically... Ignoring the fact that Sasha's telling the truth. Ronda did nothing to earn the Raw Women's Championship. I don't care how much improvement Ronda's made in the ring. I don't care. She can become the she can become the greatest female performer of all time. But all that matters is that you've got to earn your opportunities. Earn your title shots. Ronda, uh, Ronda didn't earn shit. She got a title shot handed to her at Money in the Bank. Oh, but Nia Jax challenged her. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Nia Jax challenged her or not. You st that still doesn't mean you earned a title shot. Same thing with the whole thing with with Alexa Bliss when she was suspended for thirty days. She bro she went breached of her she breached her suspension, but instead of being she breached her suspension. And she got rewarded. That's not earning a title shot. Come on, guys. Wake up. I don't care how much importance Ronda's built up in the ring. How much better she's gotten. All that matters is how she won that title. 
And we all know she did absolutely nothing to earn that title. So everything Sasha Banks said is 100% truth. I don't care what you say about this situation. You can try and back up Ronda saying how much she's improved. But in reality, she did not deserve the championship because of that incident. She doesn't deserve the title no matter what you say. So Sasha Banks was telling the truth. And I find it funny that Becky, Charlotte, and Sasha, three women of the horsewomen, they've exposed Ronda, and they were chucking truth bombs on Ronda. I find it funny that they're the only people that Ronda's, you know, getting really aggravated with. Because they because they're speaking the truth about her. They're speaking the truth about her and she's getting all aggravated. She's like, oh, 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 I hate you, you know? Because they're telling the truth. They're exposing Rhonda. They know Rhonda's done shit. She's, Rhonda's done shit to deserve that title. She's been getting handed everything. That's why she's getting all hot-headed and angry. Sure, it's good, sure, sure, it's good to see Rhonda in that type of mood. That is why Rhonda should be a goddamn heel. That's why Rhonda should be a goddamn heel. Her being a heel would fit her perfectly. And, and, and besides, guys, there was these reports going around that Sasha Banks is teasing that she could leave WWE. What happens if she does leave? Because there were those reports about Sasha Banks possibly leaving WWE. Do you know that will probably ruin WWE's plans for a 4v4 match? I'm just saying, guys. But Sasha Banks and Bailey win this match. And uh, Sasha Banks taps out Natalia to the bank statement. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the first official loss in the career of Ronda Rousey in the WWE. Oh, she didn't tap out. She wasn't the one that lost. It still counts. For people that need to understand, it still counts as a loss. Even, everyone loses in the Royal Rumble except for the winner. Every person that gets tossed over the top rope, they lose. Every person that gets eliminated in the Royal Rumble, they lose the match. That's why Oscar didn't get eliminated. Because if she got thrown over, she would have lost. So, so this still counts as a loss. She's not undefeated anymore. If WWE continued to try and hide the fact that she that she's still undefeated, don't believe them. Because they're t because they're lying to you. Sasha Banks and Bailey were the first people to nail a loss on Ronda Rousey on Monday Night Raw. I guarantee you WWE will put all that credit on Charlotte Flair when she beats her in a singles match. They'll make it sound like Charlotte Flair was the first person to beat Ronda Rousey. But technically, it was Sasha and Bayley in a tag team match. That's all I'm going to say about that. So, that's your Monday Night Raw, Raw review, everybody. Monday Night Raw wasn't really all that exciting. It wasn't really all that great. But, it definitely wasn't as good as last week. Definitely. Nowhere near as great as last week's edition. So, I hope you guys all enjoyed this review. Hit that thumbs up if you guys did enjoy. Comment your opinions down below as well. And uh, be sure to follow me on my social media as well. PValentine95. And again, I want to bring this up to you guys. I am on the road to 100 subscribers. And I hope the people that do watch this video subscribe. Because I want to, re because I want to at least reach... 100 subscribers maybe before maybe maybe by the time we get to Wrestlemania I hope we can hit 100 subscribers if there are people out there that are willing to help with that I would greatly appreciate it so that's basically it everybody thank you all so much and I'll see you all for my Smackdown review tomorrow see you later